John here guys and today we're talking about the DJI radio. Now this radio is, I don't want to say it's a controversial thing, but um, there's a lot of pros and cons to this thing. So for a lot of people that want to get into FPV, DJI is the way to go. And one accessory that's not talked about as much as the goggles and the air units that go into the quads themselves is the radio or transmitter or controller. They all mean the same thing. And this one is, it's, it's very unique because it's like very premium feeling and cheap feeling at the same time. Now, what do I mean by that? The, pla the hard plastic shell, the casing, the weight, the battery life of this thing are all super premium. The USB connector that charges the internal battery is outstanding. Um, but there's some things that are just not that great. This is an FR Sky X90 Tyrannus radio. This is kind of what hobby people have been flying for like over 20 years right uh things that look just like this and if you look at a couple of things the the main things where i'm gonna say are physically tangibly um, not as good and that's important because this is how you are going to react this is how you're going to interact and control your aircraft um, and i'm gonna talk about the sticks and the switches the sticks are very loose i don't want to say that they're toy grade because they're not toy grade but they don't feel like full hobby grade like these do. These just have a better feel. Um, these are very, very loose. Now, you can remove this plastic covering and adjust the spring tension on here to get it a little bit firmer. Now, I do really appreciate that. Some of these radios, like this one, I gotta take the whole thing apart to be able to do that. So that is a bonus that they've allowed you to do, be able to do that so easy, but it's still not quite how I want it. Um, I almost, kind of liken it to like a very loose clutch if you've ever driven a manual um, transmission car now i don't necessarily want it to be like a like a v8 mustang where it's like man it's like a stairmaster you're working out your calves shifting that thing right um, i want but i do want to feel it right if you've ever flown something that's super super small like a like a honda civic base model you know those clutches are very very light and you don't necessarily feel um, you want that response and feedback to your fingers to be able to get the maximum amount of control and the maximum amount of smoothness. I noticed when I flew this, I was used to a firmer grip. Now, I actually like my gimbals on the looser side, but this was way beyond loose. Um, I, it, it almost felt like I was overshooting my, my finger movements, and it felt like my, claw, my quad was a little bit sloppy in the air. The other thing is these switches. Look, they're so small. They don't have a very satisfying click. This is a three position switch and it's just very clunky. Here is your full hobby grade radio. You can hear that? It just, it's so much easier. And, and when you have goggles on your head, you really need to be able to feel that motion with your thumbs, depending on what kind of setting you're changing. Um, if I was starting out, I would probably recommend going with the Tango 2. This has Crossfire built in. It has a module bay that you can add on that I've added on here. That means you can get a multi-protocol module and control a variety of control outputs on there. But why is the DJI radio still going to be for some people? Well, the reason for that is if you use the DJI radio, this costs $300. Um, a premium radio setup that I use, my radio setup with Crossfire and the Jumper T18 Pro, that is about 250 bucks if you add on the Crossfire antenna. This is about 160 bucks, you know, if you don't add on the other add-ons. Um, so this is, whoa, this is by far more expensive, 300 bucks, but what do you get with this? With this, you can control your unit with the DJI Air unit or the Cadex VC unit or the Cadex Nebula unit. That means you don't have to install an extra receiver on your quadcopter. That means you are spending about $30 less per drone and you're also having four wires less to solder. You're also having one receiver or a component less to mount somewhere on the quad. So that's the benefit of this. It's cheaper per drone, it's easier per drone, it's faster per drone. Um, these things are super easy to bind up. DJI has really done a good job on that. 
So I could see the lazy builder in me wants to love this thing. So why do I still not love it? Because oftentimes I will take the path of least resistance when it comes to building especially. Well, the control link is just not robust enough. The range that you're going to get is gonna be problematic. And it's almost not just the range itself, it's the fact that the range of the control link is so much less than the range of the video link. And you actually always want that to be opposite. You want your video to start fuzzing up, clouding up, giving you warnings you can see, letting you know I need to turn around before your control link. Because if your control link starts to fade, there's no warning you're gonna see on the screen. Your quad's just gonna lose control and you're gonna fall out of the air. And if they were the same distance, it would be a little better, but they're not. This is much less range on the control link than the video link, and that is a problem. Gentlemen, that's not acceptable. People have also noted that they will get a fail safe, which is when the control link drops and it falls out of the air. It's also a bit more difficult to set your fail safe mode on here. I've heard instances where people just didn't have it set up because they're so used to the other radios where you set it in there. This doesn't have a screen like these other ones do. So you can't go into OpenTX, which is the open source um, transmitter software that most of these radios use and set up your fail safe. Fail safe is what activity you want your craft to do if it no longer receives a control signal. And so on a radio like this or the Tyrannus, you would go in here and set failsafe mode to no pulses. That would mean if it receives no signal pulses from the radio for a predetermined time, it's probably a few milliseconds, it will shut all of the motors on the quad down and you will fall. And you want it to do that because if you don't do that for here, you're unclear to how to do it for here, um, your quad can just keep on going. If it loses signal, it can go into the ground. We had a, uh, some folks at a race. Now they're not 100% sure if the DJ link was responsible for that, but they lost control after hit crashing into something and the quad just tried to like drill itself into the grass. They had to basically chop all the props off in order to be able to unplug the battery. So that was a scary situation. Um, so those are the shortcomings of this thing. You do save 30 bucks per quad. It is easier to build. It is easier to get in the air. But for me, I want that control link. I want the lower latency control link. I want the more range on my control link. And that's why um, if you want all those things too, I don't recommend this. If you're only gonna be flying very close to yourself, then this might be a good option for you. And of course, you'll save all that money on receivers if you can get the initial investment. So basically you get a break even after you've built 10 quads. Are you gonna have 10 quads or are you only gonna have two or three? That's where you can determine the break even for this. Thanks guys.